I was 14 years old. The doctor said that um, 30 years after first diagnosis, that's supposed to be the average lifespan of any type 1 juvenile diabetic. And I have met death face to face many times. The last time was in 2005. <laughs> You know, I went and got a job, I moved out, you know, it was sort of just a turbulent time. I was really lonely. The way you dress or the way you carry yourself actually sends a message mm -hmm. and, and it speaks to the person about how you want to be treated. Do sexy films, I would do sexy dances because I would wear stuff that are, you know, would they would they wouldn't think of you know respecting me stuff that didn't send the correct mm -hmm. message of mm -hmm. I want respect or right, I am a, I'm right. pure and holy it just didn't send that so naturally the men that I attracted were ungodly as well if you're ungodly then you're more or less you're gonna attract an ungodly man my life I was thinking you know if I get in a car the next day and we get in a crash and I die I don't think I'm gonna go to heaven and I was scared. And my wife woke up at 3 a.m. to see me convulsing and then going stiff, and she thought I was practically dead. And I saw myself down in the lobby of the hotel and 911, all of these paramedics came, and that was the closest I came for me to, to meeting death face to face, and, and God provided a way. Yeah, my father recommitted his life to Christ, and he came um, one day and said, baby girl, I'm taking you to the church. I was tricked into going to a service, and um, I couldn't understand. When I entered the, the church, I was like, everyone's raising their hands, worshipping. In my head, I was like, this is so weird. I don't want to ever do this again. I'm just going to sit through the service, and after this, just go home and forget about it. What the preacher was saying caught my attention. It was about the bleeding woman. Hmm. About the bleeding woman who, was, who has been bleeding for 12 years, mm -hmm. but then happened to touch the cloak of Jesus and was healed from then on. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know why, but I felt like crying. Meaning when the pastor said, does anyone want to receive Christ? There's two of us that kind of ran. The next morning, I woke up and I grabbed my mom because my dad would ask me too many questions and everything. So I grabbed my, my mom and I went to the couch and I said, Mom, I want to ask Jesus to come into my heart. bit about once you experience that change in life, mm -hmm. you attracted, yes, a pastor. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so crazy. No matter how many times I think about it, it's mm -hmm. just something that only God can do. Um, if it's dependent on my past, then I wouldn't be deserving the kind of husband that I have right now, right? But because of what Jesus did for me on the cross, I can live a beautiful life with my really godly husband. Come into my heart, and I got on my knee and asked Jesus to come into my heart and forgive me of my sins and make me a child of God. And and from that instant, uh, I know that I went from darkness to light, and my eternity was sealed. And and I knew that instantly, even as a little boy, and that changed my life. And it was the best decision that I've ever made. It 
it overwhelms me still. It, it um, was just everything that I was looking for. 30 years old as a diabetic, and there are no complications, Isn't nothing. That one? No, it's beyond wonderful. Uh, I think it's it's really miraculous. Really? Yes, yeah, that's why I'm bold miracle. when I come out on stage and I speak about this because people need to know that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, and He's still very much alive today as He was when He walked the earth and created and called Lazarus from the dead. You know, and that's the Jesus Christ that we speak about on a daily basis and we try and live out in our lives.